Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Paul's Church Dorking for our informal Sunday morning worship service. So whether you're a regular member of our church or you've been joining us online for the past few months or you've just chanced upon this service, it's really lovely to have you worshipping with us today. My name is Heather and I'm training to be a lay minister here. Today I'm joined by Emily and her colleagues for our musical worship, by Steve for our intercessions, by Jeff and Thea who was on placement at St Paul's two years ago for our three minute interview slot, by Felicity for our Bible reading, and finally Chris Lissaman who's continuing our sermon series on Matthew's Gospel. And as in all the best church services, we have a section for notices and Alex has some particularly important information about the church reopening in August. So let's pause for a moment, maybe close our eyes as we enter God's presence this morning. It's a prayer to open with. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and love to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. So Emily's going to continue our worship through song, after which we have our intercessions, uh, our interview, and a trailer for this year's new wine. Um, no pun intended, there's no trailers or camping involved this year. Then another Steve, Steve Henwood, will be talking about resources for children and teens over the summer holidays.
My name is Steve Goddard. The intercessions today will start with thanksgiving, and then I will pray for two countries suffering from the pandemic. I will then offer prayers for our families and our community, and end with a prayer rededicating ourselves to serve Christ. So let us come before God in prayer. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We want to thank you, Lord, for always being there for us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your love. Thank you for the beauty of your creation, for the warmth of the sunshine, the coolness of the rain, for the beautiful countryside around us, for the birds and the flowers and the trees. Thank you for providing for us, for our daily food and for our homes. Help us to appreciate and look after your world. Thank you, Lord. Amen. At the beginning of this year, a group from our church went out to India to see some of the work which Tear Fund are doing in this vast country. Let us pray now for India, where the pandemic continues to spread, and this week the monsoon rains have made the situation even worse in a number of areas. Lord, we want to lift your people in India in prayer to you now, praying that you will find ways of containing this pandemic particularly in huge conurbations where social distancing is difficult. And we pray for the Tear Fund partners, helping those affected by flooding, by providing food and temporary shelters. Please protect the partner staff so that they are able to support those in greatest need. And we want to pray for the people in Peru, South America remains the epicentre of the pandemic currently and we've all seen disturbing pictures of how the virus is affecting these communities. We thank you for the work of our mission partners, Juan Carlos and Penny, for the work they're doing amongst the poorest communities in Lima. Thank you that they have been able to use money from St Paul's to help families from Jesus El Nazareno Church to obtain food. And we pray that the local soup kitchen might be able to reopen shortly so that many others might be able to receive one nutritious meal a day. Lord, we ask that you might protect these vulnerable communities. We ask this in your name. Amen. A prayer for our families. Thank you, Lord, that many of us have been reunited with members of our family. It's such a joy to be together, even at a distance. But we acknowledge that this is not possible for everyone. And so we pray that you will continue to sustain those who are most vulnerable or have family too far away to see. And we pray for our community, for all those affected through illness or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Thank you for the support given at Food Bank, especially thinking of those who have no income. And we pray for the isolated and the housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Amen. To finish, I would like to rededicate ourselves to serve Christ in the world around us, in all we do and all we say. We are not people of fear, we are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety, we are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed, we are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving, wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Ah, Fia, yeah. good morning. It's lovely to see you uh, watching. And, um, you know, there's some people here will not know who you are. Tell us a little bit about how you got connected with us at St Paul's. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be with you this morning. I joined St Paul's, I guess, for a month, um, two summers ago, uh, when I came on placement uh, for my ordination training. So I got to know uh, a few of you, preached at some of your services, um, was in the primary school, um, and I had a really, really brilliant time. Obviously, wearing a dog collar kind of slightly gives things away, but what have you been up to since you left us? Well, um, since I left... Uh, St Paul's. I finished my training at Trinity in Bristol and I was ordained at Guildford Cathedral last summer at the same time as uh, Tom Hill okay. uh, and I'm now serving at Christchurch Woking as the curate. That's fantastic um, but you've obviously had to experience lockdown like the rest of it. What's lockdown been like for you Thea? Um, I think it's been lots of highs and lows like it has been for everyone really. I uh, moved back in with my parents um, so I've been here now for three and a half months with them because I didn't fancy living on my own through lockdown uh, so that's both a joy because um, my brother's back from university so all four of us are kind of back under the same roof we needed to clarify some rules at the beginning <laughs> um, for all being independent adults but actually we've loved spending time as a family um, that's been amazing. Uh, and I've also really enjoyed it for uh, slowing down to read, uh, to pray more. Um, I've been uh, looking at the book of Numbers, actually, in the Old Testament, uh, yeah. where there are some, some crazy stories. <laughs> yes. um, but I've really, really, I really enjoyed that. I know that you're part of uh, the New Wine uh, Regional Team for London, which uh, Rich Moy has got us involved in. Um, how did you get involved in New Wine in the first place so what is new wine for those who don't know uh so uh, new wine is a network for churches um to transform our, our our nation for jesus basically and um it mainly gathers in the summer uh, for the summer conference and uh, i started going to the summer conference when i was super small um, i gave my life to jesus uh in rock solid which is one of the kids groups when i was aged eight and uh, more recently, I guess, it's uh, become a kind of annual rhythm for me. It's an opportunity to uh, step out of my usual rhythms and patterns of life and to seek God um, under really uh, great biblical teaching. Um, also, uh, deep times of worship and prayer and to be in community with other people who I might see on a Sunday or midweek groups. Uh, but then if you're all camping together, um, it's a new kind of community. It's a new kind yeah. of uh, yeah. experience, yeah. I guess, together. Uh, well, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, but of course, the sadness this year is that New Wine Summer Gatherings are not happening. And we've got something else which we've called New Wine Breakout. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about New Wine Breakout, uh, what's, what's going to happen and how can we be involved? Well, I think this is completely amazing, to be really, really honest. Um, so rather than gathering all together in a field and camping, uh, New Wine have made all of the teaching that they had prepared and was in the pipeline for this summer available to stream online. So over the, the weekend, I think the dates are the 30th of July to the 3rd of August. Yeah. Um, they're going to live stream all of the teaching um, and some worship and also a kids and youth programme, which I think is completely amazing. So if before uh, you were turned off by the fact that it was uh, New Wine was about camping, uh, this is an amazing opportunity to engage um, with uh, some amazing biblical teaching. If you're uh, a New Wine regular, why not uh, watch in the garden and invite some friends over and watch it together? Um, and if you really, really miss the camping, why don't you put your tent up in your garden? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Anyone can join, uh, can't they? New it's completely free. Yeah. New Wine Breakout. Right. Anyway, it's been great to talk to you this morning. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, we hope we're going to see you again very soon. Bless you. Lord, here we are, daily in the same place, alone with family or housemates, but here, always here. You, Lord, are here with us. As your spirit takes its place in our homes, they become worship-filled homes. Prayers and praise rise to you turning hearts and eyes towards heaven. 
and a new call stirs, a new focus. From daily briefing to daily believing, the time has come together to become community again, building up faith, fighting inequality, challenging injustice, holding out hope. For wherever we are, we are together. So we'll worship in the kitchen, our kids will get the vision, and the young are called to rewrite the story. Lord, visit us in joy and communion and truth and power, as this once in a lifetime, never before and never again, we celebrate as united, we break out. So it's at this point we say it's time for our children's and young people's groups. We don't have live groups happening over the summer, but there is still plenty for you to get your teeth into. Have a look at the children's and youth pages on our website to see our top recommendations for each Sunday and during the week for families, children and young people. Have a look. Thank you all. Now we're moving into that part of the service that focuses on God's word as Felicity reads to us from Matthew and Chris brings us our sermon. But first, Emily's going to lead us with some songs, songs about Christ as the cornerstone, Christ as the foundation on which we build our lives.
This morning's reading is from Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. Lord of the Sabbath. At that time, Jesus went through the cornfields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some ears of corn and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple desecrate the day and yet are innocent? I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, will you not hold, get hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. If you don't know me, my name's Chris. I'm married to Emily and we've been coming to St Paul's for about a year now. This morning, I have the pleasure of speaking on this passage in Matthew. But before we get too far into it, I want to ask this question. How have you coped with the rules of lockdown? Maybe you've loved it. Maybe you actually quite like rules. You quite like when things are the way they're supposed to be. And you've been getting annoyed at the people who are breaking the rules. And uh, you don't understand why they're doing that. Maybe you work for the NHS. And obviously, the rules are helping you do your job and not be overwhelmed. Maybe you've hated the rules. Maybe from day one, you've just felt trapped You've hated that you can't see your family. You've hated that you can't see your friends or go and play sport. Actually, it just feels really rubbish. Or maybe you've uh, actually ended up completely disregarding the rules. Maybe that just extra little shop you did when you were only supposed to be going as infrequently as possible. Maybe you went for a run when we could do one unit of exercise, but then you also went for a bike ride as well just to see what you could get away with. I think there's one thing we've learned from lockdown uh, about rules, and it's that we can't really live with them, and we can't really live without them. And that's kind of a theme we're going to pick up on uh, in this passage as we look at what Jesus says about the, what Pharisees make of religious rules. So in this passage, we see uh, the Pharisees objecting to what Jesus is doing, because what Jesus is doing is uh, working He's doing the work of healing on a day which is marked out as, as holy and as a day where work isn't supposed to be done. And the Pharisees are their re religious Jewish leaders. And uh, what they think is that you, uh, you don't work, you don't do anything. That is a day marked out as holy. And uh, anything you do on that day, even if it kind of is a good thing, is just not to be done. They're very legalistic. It's very kind of black or white. And clearly in this passage, uh, Jesus just goes ahead and helps someone. He does a good thing. And they object to it. They say, you're breaking the rules. This isn't how things are supposed to be done. The Sabbath uh, is, a, is a holy day. It's still something Christians practice now, where one day a week at least, they won't work, they won't... Uh, 
go into work or work from home, they'll take that break, take that time and dedicate that to, to family life and to spending time with God. Sabbath's a good thing. And in the Jewish culture, it was a good thing. It was that day where you marked it out and set it aside and said, this is for God. So how come Jesus is breaking this Sabbath day? If this is a good thing, if this is uh, a good religious practice, how come Jesus, of all people, is the one breaking it? Well, what Jesus says is that he desires mercy, not sacrifice. And it can appear that this is about kind of head versus heart. It's like if your head says follow the rules and your heart says do something good, then go with your heart. But it's not about that. Because what Jesus does is use logic to debunk, if you like, their argument. He says, wouldn't you do something good if the opportunity came on a Sabbath day? If your sheep fell in a well and your job is to look after these sheep, wouldn't you take the sheep out of the well? Wouldn't you help it? And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? So of course you'd help a person on a Sabbath day, wouldn't you? And that's a tough question for the Pharisees because they can't really answer it. You know, on one hand, if they say, yes, of course we'd help our sheep out of the well, of course we'd help someone on the Sabbath, then they're hypocritical because they're saying you shouldn't do that on the Sabbath. And if they say no, if they say, no, I wouldn't help because of the Sabbath, they're saying, well, actually, I'm not a very good person, am I? So Jesus has caught them with this logic and uh, exposed this paradox to them that the Sabbath is supposed to be for not working, but there might be things you could do on the Sabbath that are good. So what do you do if you're faced with a decision where you're not supposed to be doing anything, but you have an opportunity to do good? It shows us, I think, that in anything, and particularly in rules, one person can see barriers and another person can see freedom. Uh, I don't know if you remember when uh, we could have one unit of exercise per day. That feels like a lifetime ago now. But there was a time where we were in lockdown and one unit of exercise a day was allowed. And uh, for me, I saw that as a freedom. I wasn't doing a unit of exercise before. But as soon as that rule came in, I thought, right, well, I'm going to go for a run or I'm going to go for a walk with Emily. And every day I ended up doing exercise when I wouldn't have normally. Other people would have seen that as a barrier. And particularly people who play sport more than once a week, or more than once a day even, would have seen that as a heavy restriction, as a, oh, I can only go out once. That's so annoying. But what it takes is a bit of a, a mindset shift and a, a change in perspective to see that actually some rules are for our freedom. That rule on one unit of exercise, was that a restriction or was that a freedom? And it was both, wasn't it? It was a bit of a paradox where you're limited to one, but you're also freed to go for one. And that's what we're faced with here. The Sabbath is a good thing, but we also know that doing good is a good thing. Jesus uses the line, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Basically, he's saying here, there's no rules that stop you from doing good. I don't know if you've ever thought that, but it's slightly mind-blowing to me that there aren't any rules that stop you from doing good. There's obviously some limitations on money, on resources, on time, but there's no, there's no laws. There's no lockdown that restricts you from doing good. It takes a while for that to actually sink in. That you can do anything good. You know, if you've got an idea to help someone, or there's someone you can see that's in need, or um, you particularly like doing something nice for people, there's a particular thing that you always like to do, uh, whether it's give people hugs. I know a lot of people have been missing that at the moment. Uh, maybe you have been blessed with money and resources and you, you like to give gifts to people. Or maybe it's more of a spiritual gift of healing, uh, like Jesus uses in the passage. There's nothing stopping us. There's nothing stopping us to do the, doing these things. And so what's required is a bit of a change of mindset 
as we emerge from 2020 lockdown and as some things carry on online, I want us to think through what this means for us. You know, are the rules that are placed on us, are they restrictions or are they releases? And Jesus, we see, is the perspective giver. He's the one that can shift our thinking from, I have to do this, or I'm supposed to do this, into the choice is yours, the freedom is yours. Go and do what you want to do that's good for people. It also gives us a bit of a chance to reflect and to think through what it is that's stopping us from doing good things. There's a tale of uh, an elephant uh, who is tied up. It's a massive, great thing. that's just tied up with a very small, very light piece of rope. And people are going up to it thinking, isn't this just going to break free? Isn't this just going to run and, you know, destroy and hurt people? And the owner of the elephant says, no, because it's tied up. It thinks it can't go anywhere because it's had that tiny rope tied to it since it was a very small elephant when the rope would have held it. And now it thinks that it can't go anywhere even though it could, at a moment's notice, break free of the rope. And that's just an example of how a perspective that you hold can completely change what you're able to do or what you think you're capable of doing. I wonder what it would look like for our church to actually break free from that small rope that's holding us, that isn't actually holding us back. And what if we embraced the idea that there's nothing stopping us doing good for our community. I wonder what ideas we'd come up with. I wonder how creative we'd be. I wonder what we'd end up doing that we wouldn't have even imagined before. And on a personal level, what is that thing that you could do that's good? That you felt like there were some kind of rules or restrictions that stops you doing it? If you could do anything, What would that good thing be this week or tomorrow or Monday? There's nothing stopping us helping people. There's nothing stopping us loving people. There's nothing stopping us encouraging people, even in lockdown and coming out of lockdown. There's nothing stopping us healing people. There's nothing stopping us giving to people. There's nothing stopping us supporting people. All of these things are, God forbid, possible on Zoom even. But what this passage does is show that there's rules and restrictions and then there's healing power of doing good things for people. I wonder what our community would look like, what our church would look like and what our world would look like if we embraced the rule that there's no rule on what you can't do in terms of good things for the people around us. So as I come to a close, uh, let's pray. Father, I just want to pray for uh, us as people who sometimes love rules, sometimes hate rules. I've had to put up with a lot of rules over the past five months. Um, But we know that we can't really live with them. We can't really live without them. Father, would you help us to see that there's actually just nothing stopping us doing good things for people. Whatever that is for us this week and as we uh, emerge from lockdown. Father, I pray you'd make those things really clear to us, both now and in those moments that we find ourselves in, where we're given that choice of doing something good that's maybe difficult or we think there's a restriction. Father, would you just give us the boldness to just go ahead and do it? Would you give us a clear sense that there's just nothing stopping us? In your name. Amen.
Alex, I'm the Associate Vicar here at St Paul's Church uh, and I've just got a few things I'd love to tell you about coming up next Sunday. You may recall if you watched the service last week, we talked about opening up the church and having a service there. That's going to go ahead and I promised I'd let you know today how we're going to do that. So next Sunday at 10 o'clock we're going to be having a service at the church and the way it's going to work is we'll welcome you in. Uh, Jenny's going to be there, one of our ministers, and then we're going to watch the service that you watch at home on a big drop down screen and at the end of that we'll be taking communion at the church. So that's the plan for how the service would work. If you would like to be part of that, this is what we would love you to do. Please could you email support at stpaulsdorking.org.uk and let them know that you'd love to be there. Three things you'd like to know. Um, your name, that should come across in the email, but some people have quirky emails, bunny at bounce.com or something like that. So could you give us your name? Could you let us know how many people from your household are intending to come just so that we can arrange seating? Um, and then last of all, any particular special needs you might have. Uh, are you bringing a wheelchair so we can make room for that or a push chair? Do you let us know. What will happen then is we'll email you back and we'll let you have a checklist just so that you can come to church safely, know exactly how to be prepared for that, what to bring with you. And also we'll send you a track and trace form that we're required to do. We'd love you if either to fill that in before you come to church, if you have a printer, if you don't, and we'll have forms at the church for you to complete. One thing I'd really love your help on those, please could you email back uh, by close of play Monday, tomorrow. So you've got today and tomorrow to email for the service on Sunday the 2nd. What we'll then do is we'll email you all those details. If unfortunately we've reached our capacity of 26, then we'll also send you an email just to say, we're really sorry this week, we can't do it, but please do email next week. And the plan will be that each Sunday morning we'll open the booking for the following Sunday at church. And we'll make sure that if you haven't been able to come next Sunday, There'll be room for you this Sunday after. So that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. I'm sure we might have one or two little teething issues, but we want to learn. We'd love to hear from you. And um, we're going to look forward to hosting you back in the church. Now, of course, for the majority of us, we're not going to be at the church. I can't go um, through August. I'm still shielding. Um, so we are going to make sure that our online services are just as good as ever. One change though to let you know about is through August we're just going to have one service. We'll be airing it still at 9 o'clock and at 10.30 so you can still watch it in your pyjamas early or you can get changed, go for a run, have breakfast, do all your jobs and then sit down at 10.30 to watch it then. But it'll be one service so we're going to take some of the great bits from the 9 o'clock, some of the great bits from the 10.30 and mix them up different styles of worship, a little bit of liturgy, uh, different prayers that maybe you're not entirely used to or familiar with, but it's a great way for us to appreciate the breadth of the way in which we can worship God together. And uh, some of it you're going to like, some of it might feel a bit strange, but why don't you approach this service through August as being a chance just to appreciate the different ways that different people worship God and encounter him week by week. So that's going to be our plan throughout August, uh, a, a mixed service um, and that really gives Philip, who does all of our editing, a little bit more of a break. It gives Emily and Helen a little bit more of a break uh, and allows us to slow our pace slightly in August so that we can launch ourselves into the autumn full of energy and vigour. Two very quick things just to let you know about. And lastly, um, welcome coffee. Next Sunday at 11.30, I would love to invite you to a welcome coffee Zoom after the service. I will have a, a link uh, that will be on our website and we're also going to, if you'd like to come, just email us again at the support email address uh, and tell us if you would like to join us. Now, if a welcome coffee release, if you're new, if you feel new, we've been in lockdown for ages, so you may have started coming along to the church in January, uh, but you, it feels like a long time since we've physically been together. We'd love you to sign up. If you've been watching online um, and would like to come along and just get to meet some other people who have joined uh, the congregation online as well, we'd love you to come. It gives us a great chance just to get to say hi, hear a little bit more about you. We can go into breakout rooms, so it's not going to be stressful or traumatic, it's going to just be a great chance to get to meet you. So please do either email us or look on the website for a, a link um, to come and join us for Welcome Coffee. And then lastly, lastly, next Sunday at 6.45, 
we did it last month, all the churches together in Dorking are coming together to pray for our community, for healing and for God to move in this community and in this country and in this world. Love to invite you again to join us next Sunday evening at 6.45. Again, if you're interested, just look on the website for a, a link and uh, or email us again at support and we'll tell you all the details you know. That's it. Have a great week. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Now it's time to draw our morning worship to a close. And as we pray this final prayer, let's reflect on what we've heard from Chris this morning about letting nothing stop us from being a force for good in the world and thinking about what each of us could do this week to make a difference. So a final prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As ever, do get in touch if there's any way we can help with prayer or in terms of other support. But thank you so much for joining us this morning and we look forward to seeing you again soon.